Hi, I'm Joe, a Warsaw-based shooting instructor. In today's video, I'd like to discuss the doctrine and operating mechanism of the safety used in several of the most common open bolt machine guns currently in military service, as this is another characteristic of open bolt weapons that may not be immediately obvious to those only familiar with typical civilian firearms. First, I'll discuss the nature of the problems that can arise as a result of the improper use of the safety, then I'll look at some of the doctrine taught by different militaries regarding when and how the safety is used, and I'll conclude the video by demonstrating how the safety mechanism works and how it is used on some popular models of machine gun, so stay tuned. The MG42 trigger group continues to be used to this day in a number of contemporary weapon designs in use in militaries all across the globe, most notably the FN Mag and its national variants such as the US Army M240 Bravo and Canada's C6, as well as FN's Mini-Me, which again includes the variants such as the M249 Saw and C9 machine guns, and of course in the MG3 and other MG42 derivatives. As a result, the same handling principles apply to all these guns. The average rifleman or civilian firearm owner may think to themselves that a safety is a safety, the gun has a safety, so use the safety. But this line of thinking leads us into another one of the hidden hazards associated with open bolt weapons. What you need to know is that the safety lever in these weapons is an inherently unreliable device and is only used under very specific circumstances. This unreliability stems from the fact that the safety does not disable the firing pin, but rather only blocks the sear from dropping and releasing the bolt. Remember that on open bolt weapons, the action of the bolt going into battery, independent of the trigger being pulled, is what causes the cartridge to ignite, as opposed to a hammer or striker being released by the deliberate pull of the trigger. For this reason, this design is particularly susceptible to failing in a number of situations. First, simple vibration or strong shocks may be enough to cause the sear to release the bolt on a cocked and safed loaded weapon. As well, when switching from the partly loaded or amber state to the cocked and safed or red state, the soldier may fail to pull the bolt back far enough to engage the sear their hand may slip off the charging handle, or the trigger, sear, or bolt may be damaged or fouled, causing a failure to cock, which can then result in the bolt traveling forward and igniting the cartridge, causing a negligent discharge. As a result, a loaded machine gun is only ever cocked when the soldier is in a firing position and aiming at a target. Therefore, the standard procedure for safing the weapon in all situations outside of combat is to clear the gun as normal, then ride the bolt into battery on an empty chamber using the charging handle and leaving the safety on fire. This is the Bundeswehr's machine gun and loaded, chamber empty, uncocked status, and the US Army's green status. Keeping the weapon uncocked also has the added benefit of not leaving the recoil spring compressed unnecessarily. The standard procedure for carrying a loaded machine gun in a combat environment, but outside of an actual engagement, is to place a belt on the feed tray of the Bundeswehr's previously machine gun unloaded, chamber empty, uncocked state, and the US Army's green state weapon. The gun is then in the partly loaded or amber state. This status in itself is inherently very safe. The German manuals even reiterate this point several times, as it is impossible for the weapon to have a negligent discharge. However, the US Army prohibits its soldiers from placing open bolt weapons into the amber state. The problem with the amber state arises when switching from the partly loaded or amber state to the cocked and safe or red state, because in order to do this, the weapon must be cocked with the safety set to fire, and for the reasons previously mentioned, it then becomes possible for the operator to experience a negligent discharge. Operator incompetence seems to be the main driver behind this change of US Army procedure. In the US military, the amber status is even colloquially referred to as the 
aircraft loading, or the state you would place the weapon in prior to getting onto an aircraft or into a vehicle on the way to a mission. But again, that transition from amber to red without the ability to disable the actual firing mechanism in the weapon has led to dangerous incidents. Another issue that you must be aware of is the fact that on trigger groups based on the MG42 design, the safety must never be engaged when the bolt is in battery. This is because the safety physically blocks the sear from dropping down, and if you go to cock the bolt, the bolt tries to force the tail of the sear down against the safety, and the whole mechanism gets jammed up or damaged. Novice machine gunners are particularly susceptible to this problem. The functionality of the safety mechanism can also impact tactical considerations, such as needing to cock the weapon during periods of noise discipline, for example, while waiting to initiate an ambush. As an aside, open bolt weapons should not be used for the initiation of an ambush whenever possible, as these weapons are particularly susceptible to experiencing stoppages at inopportune times. On some other machine guns, such as the ZB and Bren lineage, the safety simply raises or lowers the trip lever to engage or disengage either the semi or full auto parts of the sear, and while the weapon is capable of being cocked while on safe, the danger of a failure to cock on a loaded weapon leading to a negligent discharge is still present. The inability to effectively safe and cock a loaded machine gun has been a subject of much consternation for many decades, and the latest generation of machine guns, such as Heckler & Koch's MG5, or SIG's new M250 and M338, have finally seen the development of a safety mechanism that disables the firing mechanism, allowing the operator to now cock the loaded machine gun with the safety on safe. Now, Let's look at Wehrmacht, Bundeswehr, and U.S. Army doctrine to get a better understanding of when, where, and how the weapon is to be safed, loaded, and carried. In general, there are four states that these types of machine guns are used in. First, the bolt is in battery on an empty chamber, the safety is on fire, and the weapon is unloaded. Second, the bolt is in battery, on an empty chamber, the safety is on fire, and the weapon is loaded. Third, the bolt is cocked, the weapon is loaded, and the safety is on safe. And four, the bolt is cocked, the weapon is loaded, and the safety is on fire. Soldiers are responsible for indicating the state of their weapon to their superiors and colleagues, such as after clearing the weapon or passing the weapon to another soldier, and they must place their weapon in the state ordered by their superiors. In the Bundeswehr, soldiers are required to announce the following three states when handling the weapon. 1. Machine gun unloaded, chamber empty, uncocked. 2. Machine gun partly loaded. And 3. Machine gun loaded and safed. Meanwhile, the U.S. Army has color-coded these four levels of weapon safety status, those being green, amber, red, and black. As previously mentioned, the U.S. Army decided to prohibit the amber status, that is, with the bolt in battery on an empty chamber, the safety on fire, and a belt loaded in the feed tray. Supposedly, this is in response to incompetence-based negligent discharges taking place when cocking the weapon. Looking across several Wehrmacht, Bundeswehr, and U.S. Army manuals, we can compile the following guidelines for when and where the weapon will be set to which safety status, and also how to move between safety statuses. Advancing up through the four states, number one, when carrying the weapon outside of combat or on the march, whether in the hands of the soldier or on a vehicle, the weapon must be unloaded with the bolt and battery and the safety on fire it is permissible to have a drum or cartridge can attached to the weapon. 2. When a state of heightened combat preparedness is necessary, for example for aircraft defense on the march, or in combat during an advance, the weapon will be kept with the bolt and battery on an empty chamber, the safety on fire, and a belt placed in the feed tray. 
In this state, the weapon cannot unintentionally discharge a round, but is still ready to shoot. This is the prohibited amber status. I often hear it referred to by U.S. soldiers as aircraft loading. In other words, how you would load your weapon in order to board an aircraft or other vehicle when being transported into battle. Only when the order clear for combat has been issued, the weapon is cocked and placed on safe. By only cocking the weapon when in the firing position, the risk of a negligent discharge is reduced. To load the weapon in this state without having previously partly loaded the weapon, cock the bolt, engage the safety, and load the belt. It is forbidden to move with the weapon in this state. However, the Bundeswehr grants one exception to moving with the weapon cocked, and that is while advancing in the stalking position. Here, during training, the weapon will be placed on safe until immediately before firing, and in combat, the weapon can be placed on fire. 4. When the order to fire is given, the safety is placed on fire, and the weapon is on target with the soldier's finger on the trigger. To move down through the four states, the cocked and loaded weapon is placed on safe after loading if it is not to be shot immediately, the firefight is interrupted, or the mission is achieved and unload has not been ordered. The safety is also used with the cocked bolt when loading and unloading the weapon, or when clearing a stoppage. Basically, any time the bolt is to the rear and not being shot, the safety should be placed on safe. To switch from being cocked and loaded to uncocked and loaded, or partly loaded, slash amber, such as in preparation for a new advance, engage the safety, remove the belt, check the feed path and the chamber, disengage the safety while pointing the weapon in a safe direction, support the bolt as it goes into battery, and then load a belt in the feed tray. To unload the cocked and loaded weapon, engage the safety, open the top cover, remove the ammunition, check the feed path and the chamber, close the top cover, pull the charging handle back, disengage the safety while pointing the weapon in a safe direction, support the bolt as it goes into battery, and the weapon will be unloaded, uncocked, on an empty chamber. Here's a demonstration of how to move between the four safety statuses. First, let's clear the weapon. Make sure the safety is on fire. Cock the bolt. Hold it. Engage the safety. Bring the charging handle forward. Open the top cover. Remove the ammunition. Check the chamber. Close the top cover, bring the charging handle back, disengage the safety, pull the trigger, drive the bolt into battery. The weapon is now on green. To go from green to red, cock the bolt back, engage the safety, bring the charging handle forward, and load the belt. To go from red to black, disengage the safety. After firing, re-engage the safety. To go from red down to amber, first you must go to green. So, open the top cover, Remove the ammunition, check the chamber, close the top cover, pull the charging handle back, disengage the safety, pull the trigger, ride the bolt home, the gun is now in green, and to go from green to amber, load the belt. And now for the light machine gun. First, let's clear the weapon. Remove the magazine. Put the safety on safe. Pull the charging handle back. Lock the bolt. 
charging handle forward, check the chamber, pull the charging handle back, put the weapon on the fire, pull the trigger, release the bolt, put the weapon on safe. The weapon is now on green status. To move to amber, simply insert the magazine. To move to red, cock the bolt, push the charging handle forward, and to move to black, set the safety to fire. After firing, move back to red by putting the safety on safe, and to move to green, remove the magazine, check the chamber, pull the charging handle back, put the safety on fire, pull the trigger, ride the bolt home, put the safety on safe. Now it's on green. To go back to amber, load the magazine. Now, let's take a look at how the safety interfaces with the sear in the MG42 trigger group. For a comparison, I also have a trigger group from a ZB30J. To simplify things, I've removed the modified semi-auto trigger components so that we can get a better view of the sear and the safety. I'll let you know if I ever manage to get them all back together again. Now, As you can see, when the safety is disengaged, the sear can drop. When the safety is engaged, the sear can no longer move. The ZB30J and the identical trigger group that was used in the Bren works a little differently because it is a select fire. It uses a trip lever to engage the full auto and semi auto parts of the sear. This is a semi auto only conversion, so when you move the safety selector, the disconnector comes up. When you pull the trigger, the sear drops, and as soon as the bolt hits the disconnector, the sear resets. So, unlike the MG42, the safety only prevents the disconnector from moving, and it doesn't block the sear. And now you know how to properly safe your machine gun and avoid those awkward negligent discharges and resulting lengthy stays in the stockade or the cemetery. I'll follow up this video with two more short videos showing the disassembly of the MG42 
and ZB30J trigger groups, so be sure to like, share, and subscribe, check out my machine gun instruction playlist, and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash survivewithjoe. Also, please leave your questions in the comments, and I'll try to answer them in a future video. Thanks for watching.